Right. Not knowing what's going on through that woman's head at that moment in time. She could be thinking, oh, my gosh, if I tell him no. Because we see all the time, um, just the, just even simply not giving a man your phone number, what that can turn into. So just think about the fear when you guys are away from everybody and alone together, how much pressure that can put on a woman unknowingly. Being a Black person... Um, and, and, and living in a black household and from other conversations from other black people, um, it, it starts with the lack of boundaries that we're allowed to have. We can't say no. We can't say we don't like something. We can't say we don't want to eat this. We <laughs> and again, like we, yeah. and yet, you know, yes, we know it can go too. you know, it can be too much. But for the most part, we should have autonomy over our bodies even as a child and i think because that is most of the time taken away from us um whether it may be a uh, punishable by getting a whooping getting grounded or whatever whatever the case may be it teaches us that we should allow people to run us run over us we can't say no or there will be consequences so in that aspect i think that more black women are prone to be more, I'm saying more black people are prone to being coerced than any other group. What's up, Bravehearts community? This is Sean Heineman, your premier pre engagement coach, back with another segment of It's Scary to Be Mary, inspiring you to love fearlessly. This topic on consent is a serious topic. Uh, I don't want to take this topic lightly, I think it's needed for <laughs> the culture that we in now. Uh, and I have a special guest. She's a first time visitor to the Brave Arts community. So let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. She's a 37 year old growing Christian certified health and physical fitness educator and volleyball coach. She's a life coach for young women and single mothers. I would like to know more about that as we move towards the end of the show. Brave Arts community, let's show some love to Jackie. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. I hope the same for you. Yes, for sure, for sure. Love the platform. Um, everything that you got going there. Uh, <laughs> some of some of the stuff is funny. I enjoy it, but then you have some very serious topics. So when I've seen mm -hmm. this topic, um, I seen on my reels, I was like, oh, and that's when I went in your inbox. I was like, I have to interrupt. <laughs> well, talk. I appreciate you reaching out because it is a very um touchy subject and a lot of people um have many misconceptions about what consent actually looks like yes and I, I would love to get your feedback on that as well so if you have questions for today's guest feel free to leave your questions below thank you once again for joining us if you have any questions make sure you leave them in the comment section and we will answer your questions so first of all who or what inspired you to become the woman that you are today well, so it's like a mixture of both my mom and my dad, like my mom, super duper Christian and my dad, super duper of the world. <laughs> so I got to see many sides. I got to gain many perspectives about how life looks from a side where you're choosing to make the right decisions and the other side where you're making wrong decisions and what those outcomes and consequences may be. So Based off of that, it has helped me, um, even though, you know, I'm not perfect and I've made mistakes, I know how to take accountability because of how I was brought up. So that's really it. Just my, my mom, both my mom and dad, because they're all, they were on different sides of the fence and I was able to merge them together to, um, to just make me more of a open-minded individual so I can learn more. Yeah, got that perfect plan. That's that's beautiful. Um, and I, I like asking our guests that because the, all we see is kind of like the finished product on social media. You mm -hmm. know, I kind of like to look a little bit behind the camera or behind the lens. So uh, I think that question is important. Uh, so what inspired you to tackle a topic like consent? How would you define that? So because I am a, like as you mentioned, I am a certified health and physical education teacher and my main group of kids that I teach are high school, teaching about consents is also one of the requirements. But 
also i was just scrolling on one of the videos which i believe you saw me um, react to on a reel um where a woman had mentioned that a lot of the bodies that she caught or men that she slept with um were based off of them refusing no the first time and so when i thought about that I, not only do do I know that people not understand that that's a possibility, but I've also experienced that that myself um, as a woman. Um, now, the way that I define consent is the way that you can gauge it is when you are having a sober, enthusiastic yes. So whatever it is, or you and we're talking about sexual consent, right? We're talking about when it comes to sex. Um, really anything that involves touching or anything of the sort. Um, but if you are able to get an enthusiastic, yes. And when I say sober, that means that they are not under the influence of any type of drugs or alcohol mm -hmm. and they can freely tell you, yes, I am comfortable with this. I'm okay with this. I like that. And I know it seems like, oh, this is so uniform, <laughs> but there are certain things that you're certain, um, expressions, nonverbal expressions that your partner can give you to let you know if they are comfortable or not when it comes to a particular thing concerning sex in some form. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, because I only can imagine, you know, maybe some of the stories that you've heard um, or maybe some things that you have possibly uh, experienced yourself, but I would like to talk about that as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so can you share any personal experiences or challenges that you faced in a certain Oh, uh, I mean, honestly, yeah. there's so many. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, not, and again, it's not taken lightly. But um, as you get older as a person and you realize, because most people aren't aware, the people who are experiencing con um, lack of consent and the people ho who are doing the coercion, they may not understand fully. But once you understand, then you realize, hey, that wasn't okay to do. Hey, that was manipulative. Hey, I, sh once I said no, that should have been it. But we don't, we don't think about that a lot of times because we aren't educated on it. But um, one of, one of the ones that I can think of some where it ended with sexual activity and others that didn't, one in particular that stands out to me is when I was around 20, three years old, um, I was talking on the phone with this guy who I was introduced to by another friend of mine. And we were talking on the phone late at night. Um, we started talking sexual, nothing that was directed towards him. I think he asked me about, you know, if I was aroused and I agreed, yes, I'm aroused. Um, he asked me my favorite position. I told him my favorite position, but it, again, it wasn't directed to him. I was just going along with the conversation. So, and I'll, and I'll touch back on, you know, my thought process um, after the fact, mm -hmm. but um, fast forward, I end up finally meeting him. He was throwing a party at his home. And so he invited me, I came over. Um, I was only with the public in the public area for only a short period of time before he led me to another room, letting me know, Hey, let's go to this other room. That's more quiet. And for the fellows who are listening, that is also a form of coercion because when you are pulling a person out of a public space and putting them into a more private space, that can be very intimidating for and scary for a woman I know, again, I know that people may not understand that it looks like that, but when we think about the full scope of things, that's exactly what it can lead to. Mm -hmm. um, so once he led me to the room, I think I went to the restroom to wash my hands or something. And so when I came back out, next thing I know, his penis was out. He ain't asked me nothing. He didn't give me no context clues. He literally just pulled his penis out. And so at this time, I'm like, uh, sir, you, I, that's not the type of party. That's not the type of time that I'm on right now. Yeah. But he mentioned, oh, well, when we had that conversation the other day, I thought that you wanted to do something with me. And so from then on, I became more cautious about the type of conversations that I had with men. 
um, being super open because I, I used to be so open because I thought that was so cool to be honest and upfront, not realizing that people can actually use those things against you or it can give them the wrong perception. Wow. Thank you um, for sharing that because mm -hmm. a lot of guys, and I'm glad you shared that because for the men who are listening, um, just to give them an idea, and, and we're going to kind of talk about that a little later too, mm -hmm. but uh, I was talking, I had a guest on the other day and we were talking about touch and she was saying how a lot of men growing up when they were boys, they were never like touched in a healthy way where they had um, love and affection. Mm -hmm. You know, there it is. It, and by the time they got older, they just thought that if I touch a woman, it just really, it just leads into sex because now I got right. affection. You and she I mean? lets me that it's okay. <laughs> right. Not knowing what's going on through that woman's head at that moment in time. She could be thinking, oh my gosh, if I tell him no, because we see all the time um, just the, just even simply not giving a man your phone number, what that can turn into. So just think about the fear when you guys are away from everybody and alone together, how much pressure that can put on a woman unknowingly. Yeah, that's that's happening. And too. it's not just women. I mean, not just men don't. It, it's, it's women, too, that that <laughs> that don't. Um, require that don't ask for consent from men too but it's just a lot more prominent when it comes to men because men are more in pursuit of sex than women are yeah yeah there was a time um, and this was you know some years ago I was single uh, I remember I was talking to this girl and uh, we were talking for a little while and it was like okay we're gonna connect we're going to spend some time together, like, you know, get this hotel room. So, you know, the, like this is the whole game plan, mm -hmm. going the whole the whole game plan. And uh, I get the room and, you know, we dig it, go to the hotel room. And in my head, of course, I'm only thinking one thing. Mm -hmm. Now, what she was thinking, <laughs> I don't know. So <laughs> that night. I asked her, you know, I'm trying to get physical with her and touch her and all this other stuff. And she was like, I don't feel like it tonight. And I was like, oh. oh, oh, like, okay. Like I was taken aback. I'm thinking like I got the room. To me, in my 19, 20 year old mind, I'm like, this is a green light. Right. In my head. Right. And assum an assumption. Mm -hmm. Right. An assumption. <laughs> Uh, you know, and not blaming anybody, but, you know, the era I grew up in, you know, hip hop and the 90s and all this other stuff. I'm just assuming that this one thing. And when she told me no, the minute she told me no, I was like, you know what? OK. Right. And to alleviate that, that can always be a discussion beforehand. I know it's people scared of that. People are so scared of just being if you want it, you need to ask. <laughs> Things are, things are not just going to be thrown to you on a platter because you don't know what type of consequences could come in that space. So, you know, just, hey, you know, so I know we're going, I, you know, I'm flying you out because we know that that happens too. You know, I'm flying you out um, and I want to have intercourse with you. Um, are you okay with that? But but the, 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 uh, the gray area is that a person can still refuse even after they say yes. So um, I do recommend that all people watch this. Uh, it's a it's a YouTube video called A Cup of Tea, where it identifies uh, sex as tea instead, just to kind of make it easier for people to understand. So they'll mention like, um, if somebody said that they wanted a cup of tea yesterday and you gave it to them, it doesn't mean that they want a cup of tea the next day. Just because somebody stirred the pot, heated the, the kettle up, put the tea in and all that stuff, sorry, um, yeah. that they can decide that they don't want no longer want the tea. So there's so many, it's so many barriers. Just because somebody slept with you the night before doesn't mean they have to sleep with you the next night. That don't mean you. It gives you the right to just pull your thing out and 
everything is going to be okay. Um, uh, just because somebody sent you pictures or spoke sexually to you, it does not mean that you, that's the green light to move forward. Um, what's another one? It's, it's so many, it's so many different descriptions of what not to do. Even to like, when it comes to having intercourse, uh, telling your partner or lying to your partner saying that, Oh, I'm allergic to condoms or stuff like that. All of that is coercion. Like, because you're trying to either manipulate or change the situation in order for the person to give in or feel comfortable, even though it's lined with deceit. Yes, totally agree. Such a such a sensitive topic, um, mm -hmm. especially in the culture that we live in. Yes, you know, because when I saw the the video that I reacted to from that reel that you saw. The comments from the men were just so disgusting. Like it's, but it's because it's ignorance. Like you just don't have the the level of understanding to see that it does not matter if a woman likes you. That does not mean that she has to sleep with you. Because the, the first thing they'll say, "Well, why are you around men you don't like?" Most of the time, when women are coerced into sex, it's with men that they want to be with. And it, that and that actually what makes it harder to say no because you don't want them to sleep with somebody else. You don't want them to leave you. You don't want them to feel like you don't care. So you may go above and past your boundaries just to please them. And it don't make you a hoe either. It just means that you like you like the man. <laughs> yeah, because. And you know what? Now that I think about this, because um, as I hear you talk, I'm thinking about that. I said, you know, there was, this is what gave me the quote unquote green light to think that I was actually going to have sex with this lady, right? Mm -hmm. I remember probably about six months earlier, me and my friend, we kicking it. He had some female friends. Um, and we go hang out and we go in our separate cars and, you know, this girl, I go over her house. First time, you know, meeting her and we didn't know each other one night. You know what I'm saying? One night. I'm As a youngster, I'm just making this assumption like, oh, it's going down tonight mm -hmm. because I'm going over her house. And we didn't have that conversation. It was just implied that. Is twelve thirty one o'clock at night. Well, that's what your mama say. Ain't nothing open but <laughs> but legs <laughs> after twelve. So it, it's a warning, but it's not an excuse. Exactly, right? It is mm -hmm, exactly, and you know, I'm I'm young and ignorant, but mm -hmm. that set me up. Well, I mean, I knew what I was doing, but. Mm -hmm. That set me up for the next time I got to hang with another woman in my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking that this is a green light instead of us having that conversation. That I can't. I can't hear you. The volume went out. Uh oh. Uh. Can you hear me now? And so I made that assumption going to the next girl and when she told me no I was surprised because mm -hmm. I assumed that because I slept with this other girl six months earlier yeah. that it was going to happen the same way mm -hmm. and I was wrong on, on me because again like you said we didn't talk about that right I was just raised enough to know that when a woman says no you, you just back off right so um, yeah, I mean it it like again, it's just it's it's a level of understanding and and once you know, as long as you choose to educate other people and also, you know, choose to do things differently, that's all that really matters, you know? It's it again, we everybody, we don't I'm I'm I don't teach this until the kids reach, you know, uh 10th, 11th grade. So who knows what information they've gained from their parents, their uncles, there are siblings, other kids, um, and which makes it actually harder for the kids to digest the information because they've seen and heard differently. So that's another thing that needs to be considered, like what type of influences 
have they already had previously before they get to me? Yeah. Wow. But I, I usually scare them <laughs> with going to, with different stories about men going to jail for certain things, just to kind of give them an idea like, yeah, you may think that it's cool. Yeah. You may think you have game, but this same type of game will put you in jail. So, and I, and I tell everybody a lot of game that men say that they have is coercion. <laughs> yeah, it, it is, is. Yeah, it lying is. telling a woman you love them is coercion and you don't mean it that is coercion telling the woman you want her to have your baby that is coercion <laughs> telling the woman you're gonna pay her bills if she does something that is coercion <laughs> Ooh, all right this is yeah this is you're, you know because you're putting them in a and again, it all depends on the woman. It all depends on how the woman feels about it, too. It, it has to be something that is mutual, that I'll say that it has to be a mutual thing where both parties feel comfortable within the situation. Yeah. Because people can get that misconstrued. I'm not saying that, you know, when you're talking to your wife, baby, is it OK if I touch you, baby? I, I'm not saying you got to do all of that. You know your woman, you know, but if, if you sense something that's wrong but again when you're too focused on just trying to get something you're not really f worried about how that person is feeling what they're dealing with if they have changes in emotions because you're just trying to get an ex yep exactly yeah because once guys once we once we get locked in once we focused on on doing it mm -hmm. you know all, all common sense and go out the window right unfortunately yes um, is there ever a time when a woman can feel safe with letting the guy she's dating over her house? Um, honestly, no. There's not a time. Um, because I I've had I've known people for years who have who have tried to push themselves on me when I invited them to my home. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's really something that um that you would just have to gauge as a couple. If y'all can have real talks, if y'all can be open and honest about your feelings and what your expectations are and what your needs are, um, then I think it makes it a, it makes people a little bit more comfortable. Now, if you're trying to just not have sex in general, I don't suggest inviting them to your house. <laughs> Period. Uh. Period. Until, you know, until you're ready for that moment if that is what you are choosing to do because as soon as again you guys get together you're alone you got the music playing you got the netflix going ain't nobody else in there you know it's a, a some it, you're making room for things to possibly happen and we don't want to plant that seed if we don't have to love that but um the only easy way um I mean, I would say at least be in an exclusive relationship, at least, because I mean, y'all could, you could just stop talking. So you, first of all, you don't need, everybody needs to know where you live. Number one, that that's just unsafe in general. Um, but again, like I said, it, you can't, it's hard to gauge until you guys have these real conversations. You need to see what their mindset is like. They could be lying, but it, you know, at least you took preventative measures and it's all about taking preventative measures. Yeah. Yeah. And what they choose to do after that, that that's their responsibility. Yeah. That can be so dangerous. I I don't know. And, mm -hmm. and you know, then hey, people are gonna do what they do, you know what I mean? Yeah. Flying people out and all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. It's real <laughs> you don't know if you're gonna get robbed. You don't know any I remember one time there was this man and it was so messed up. So and this <laughs> This is sad because this is how desperate men will get when it comes to getting off. <laughs> so there was this person on Tinder who was literally just um, had put out like a little post about having one night stands with them. Like, you know, if you want to sleep with me, you can come over. Obviously, there was a catch. Yeah. yeah. But again, you're not thinking so this happened on multiple occasions with multiple men. On with one occasion, it happened twice with the same man. So what? She, what he? Because it was a he, but they were portraying themselves as a she, and they were going to the house. The lights were off. They told them to go into the bedroom, put a blindfold on, 
and then they would, you know, have whatever. But it was happening in the anus. And the guys, it, you know, the, again, they, they not caring. It said one time, this guy who went back for a second time, he pulled the, the, um, the blindfold off and saw a naked man run across the room. And that's how the man ended up getting in trouble. So, but my thing is, if, if you practice sexual discipline, then you probably wouldn't have gotten yourself into that position. Like, how desperate do you need that to where you can't even see how the person looks? Like, be for real. Man, be for real. Serious. Yeah. <laughs> Man, ain't that serious. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, there's times I, I was like, nah, that's sketchy. I'm <laughs> Look, if it sounds like it's too good to be true, it probably is. Yeah, yeah. I ain't about to get it. No. I've, I've done some stupid things, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, in your opinion, how can we teach our young men about consent? Um, um, like I mentioned, show them that, show them the video, show them that, that cup of tea video. That's, it's, it's so easy to grasp and understand. Mm -hmm. Um, also too, they, they need examples of what coercion looks like. Um, one of the biggest ones for me is the, the soberness is the alcohol and the getting high and all, the, but women need to know this too, because they're the some most of the time they are the ones who are being preyed on within that situation. So um, just making sure that you are sober, aware, um, and then more so, I think because I could tell them whatever I want to, but they really need to hear it from a man because I'm oh that's a woman she don't know she she gonna tell us whatever they need to hear it from men because men are the ones that are refuting it. So if a man is refuting it, then how are they ever gonna learn? They have to learn. I mean, men got to be more responsible. They have to be open to being more responsible and taking ownership of the part that they play. Not saying they have to take the full responsibility, but there is a role that they play in those type of situations. And the only way that their children can learn is if they teach them. And it don't have to be your daddy. It could be a homeboy. It could be a friend. It could be um, a mentor, somebody. But we need people that are speaking positively to our young boys and not just that like not just uplifting them but you need to educate them yeah. because that can put them in a really bad situation i mean we we see women can they can go back decades and say hey i wasn't okay with this hey i was scared of you hey you didn't say yes hey i was under the influence and there's your life going yeah and they they can have a camera phone set up somewhere you just never know i yeah it's it's yeah it, it, it is a felony in texas mm, yeah oh it's i mean it's it's a serious matter and i i think it's too much joking or uh, it's too much shaming around it mm. um you know for uh for people to really understand the, the ramifications of um you know what the outcome can be yeah yeah uh, in what ways do you think media has affected our collective understanding of consent? Um, well, I mean, they have a lot, you know, they have a lot of songs about putting, you know, I think Rick Ross, what do you say? Putting Molly in her drink. She ain't even know it. Um, I've also, but also too, Cardi, remember Cardi B made that song about getting, uh, uh I'm not even made the song. She talked about drugging a man to steal his money. <laughs> Yeah. So these things are being crooked and toxic in general is normalized when it comes to the rap culture specifically. You know, we see movies, um, but genu but generally there's a consensus behind why they showed that to begin with now, because so many people are sensitive about a lot of stuff. So I think they're being more forthcoming about what is wrong and what is right. But for the music itself, it's it's a free for all. They talk about whatever, however people listen to it. Some of them may register it. Some of them don't. They just hear work. I mean, they just hear music. But uh, I think that plays a, a huge role because yeah. like, that's what they follow. We don't have we don't have a lot of other role models for them to look up to um, besides the rap culture. Yeah. Yeah. Sad, but true.
<laughs> uh, do you believe there are cultural differences in how consent is understood or expressed? Um, I think it all depends on how a child was raised. I don't think it necessarily depends on the culture, but what I will say um being a black person um and 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 living in a black household and from other conversations from other black people um it it starts with the lack of boundaries that we're allowed to have yeah we can't say no we can't say we don't like something we can't say we don't want to eat this we can <laughs> And again, like we, yeah. and yet, you know, yes, we know it can go too, you know, it can be too much, but for the most part, we should have autonomy over our bodies, even as a child. And I think because that is most of the time taken away from us, um, whether it may be a uh, punishable by getting a whooping, getting grounded or whatever, whatever the case may be, it teaches us that we should allow people to run us, run over us. We can't say no, or there will be consequences. So in that aspect, I think that more black women are prone to be more. I'm saying more black people mm. are prone to being coerced than any other group. Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. It, and it's, it's sad in our community that, you know, especially with, with everything that's going on, you know, culture mm -hmm. you know what I mean right like that so because uh, so. I mean you have to think about it too like back in it like when I was younger they were allowing uh grown men to come to our schools sit on and eat with us and hang with us and pick girls skipping school to go hang with these men <laughs> yep yeah. Um, so I mean it's uh it's it's been it's it's so it's so normalized it's in our culture in general um, I think, too, the idea that, like, a, a girl is fast, mm. like, this is, she's a, she's fast. Where does she get that? Where does she get that from? Because, uh, un unfortunately, most Black girls have been sexually assaulted in some form before they even graduate high school. Yep. That's crazy. Yep. And it, it's, to me, it's, it speaks more so on the treatment that they have received. And I, I'm not putting this all on men. I'm not putting this on men at all. But um, if we did not have autonomy over our bodies as kids, how hard do you think it will be when we become adults dealing with other adults? Which is why I said that label of being called a hoe and all that different stuff is so demeaning to women who have experienced sexual assault. And that was a byproduct of, of what that trauma induced in them. Like for them to feel like they had to do these things or they had to please a man or they had to take care of a man because if not, all of these different things are going to happen. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's like, it's just really unfortunate. Um, and I'm just thankful that I'm able to, have the opportunity to educate both boys and girls about it just to make sure that they don't become vic a, a victim of it. Cause it's, Oh, you don't really see the effects until you see the effects. Yeah. Yeah. Because I have three little boys and, mm -hmm. Oh, Oh, I'm going to let them know. They, know they, <laughs> they, they, they babies now, but you know, when they get a little, little older, they start smelling themselves and like, the, mm -hmm. No, nah, we don't do all that around here. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, as you mentioned, it, it is a very touchy subject, but it needs to be discussed so we can save our girls and our boys. It's not just one sided. It's a it's a it's a domino effect. Yeah. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, well, that was yeah. I'm, <laughs> it's, it's, this is a very educational piece. Um, and and a real conversation, and I'm glad that we're able to have that. Uh, mm -hmm. we're almost halfway through the show now, and uh, I kind of want to switch gears a little bit, um, because some of the stuff that you said, I already know it's probably gonna go viral. Uh, you have made some very uh important points that I know a lot of mm -hmm. people just wanna, you know, have comments and stuff about. But anyway, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> my wife and I. We uh, created this uh, intimacy questions card deck. Now, a lot of people usually uh, 
uh, you know, they have their game night questions, date night and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. the difference with this is my wife and I created it because I know uh, we put our blood, sweat and tears into this. From man's oh, wow. From Congratulations. Man's right? Yeah. Thanks. So I want to switch gears and I want to uh, pull a question and. Oh look! Oh look! Now, how deep this go? Oh, oh yeah, no, no. If <laughs> I'm, it's... Jo I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> no, if it, no, if it, no, that's yeah, that's no. We, 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 we... <laughs> I know it's Christian. Like I know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we're we're about that life, but I mean, you know. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, I'm about to put a question, and uh, question. If you had a week to spend away, where would you like to go and what activities would would you enjoy? You said if I had a week to get away? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. so if I had a week to get away, I would go to Dripping Springs, which is in Austin. It's super quiet. It diminishes your nervous system levels <laughs> your stress levels um and it, it's quiet it's so quiet out there um if if i wanted to get a refresher um for a whole week i would do that on top of meditating swimming doing grounding where you know you become one with the the earth you know you take your shoes off feel the grass textures and all of that stuff um probably eating some healthy food um, and, and doing some really good exercise and just breathing in that clean air. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Austin. I'm, I'm, I'm in Austin. So. Oh, you are. Yeah, I'm in Austin. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love baby. I love dripping Springs. <laughs> <laughs> I took my kids there one time and we, uh, we got an Airbnb um, at this ranch and so they got the pet, the donkeys and yeah. the horses and they had like, they had a pool. It was so nice. It was yeah. so nice. And it was, it was very reasonable, super reasonable, but I loved it. So quiet. It's me. I'm, you know, I live in Houston, so it's almost always ruckus out here. Oh yeah. Um, So going to Austin, it's close, but it's, it's, it's close, but it's far enough to get a different type of environment and a different type of people as well. So Mm -hmm. But I love I love Austin. Mm -hmm. That if that's one place, other places I don't like being gone for that long because I'll be ready to come back. <laughs> I'll be exhausted. Now I hear you. So you more of the nature type then. Mm hmm. I like I like being active when I go on trips. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Well, that was just one of the questions in the in the intimacy card deck. I just think it's important that we just ask some things, and of course, there's you know kind of levels. Um, that was just one, one random card that I pulled. Um, so as the show comes to an end, I want to ask you some of these questions. And this is, uh, I, I just want this to be uncut. So let me know what you think. Okay. What, what is the biggest mistake you see women make when it comes to dating? Um, One of the big, <laughs> one of the biggest mistakes that I, I, ain't gonna, I can't speak for all women. Yeah. I sp I'll speak for me and, and what I may have heard. Um, but I think it's us prioritizing what our preferences are while lowering, uh, or putting our standards below our preferences. Um, because I think uh, most women know what they want. Like for me, I know that I want a Christian man, but would I be honest to say that all the men I've dated have been Christian or openly Christian? No. Um, but we try to turn them into that. Like, hey, you want to go to church with me? That dude ain't been to church in five years. <laughs> what are you doing? You know that that's not for you. But I think we we there's a lot of time that's wasted when trying to do that. You just you want people to look, you want that person to look like this, but you want them to have the qualities of that. And you you can't have both. You got you're gonna have to make some conces some concessions. And I mean it's it's okay. I mean I I, I I don't even think that women really prioritize looks like that. I've seen women date fat guys, ugly guys, broke guys. Um, but if they have something that gauges the woman, because women, 
we really like how a man makes us feel. Like, I don't care if you got a million dollars, but you boring. I don't care about you. <laughs> you don't have no personality. I don't want to be around you. I don't have nobody I can talk and laugh with. So that's a waste of my time. But also, too, just a man being able to make you laugh should not be priority either. Like, mm. laughing is cool, but long term, how how far can that really take you? Yeah. Because when he, when you start seeing all that other stuff, it ain't gonna be funny no more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, all the laughter is gone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and a lot of times the stuff that made you laugh now piss you off. <laughs> Man, out of reach. <laughs> but yeah, but I I think that that's one of the main reasons is that we prioritize our preferences over our standards. And the thing is, preferences. Their preferences for a reason. They can be negotiated. Mm -hmm. Your standards should always stay the same. Yeah. Um. Yeah. This. Yeah, that's good. Cause I, I'm gonna I'm gonna save this question for another time. Cause I would love for you to come back. Mm -hmm. Uh. Okay. Fill in the blank. My last relationship taught me. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Dang. You don't have to say their name. <laughs> my no, my last relationship told me that I should have stayed on God. I should have stayed with God. That that I my last I should have stayed. I should have stayed with God. Mm -hmm. I should have listened to God. Mm -hmm. I should have did what God told me to do and what I knew what I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. That's it. That that's that's it. <laughs> Look, drops Mike. <laughs> that's real. Seriously, seriously, yeah. Uh, hmm. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage or relationships? That you need to be dating people who are intentional about those things. Mm -hmm. And I know, yes, yeah, some people well, being a lie, but a lot of they can't lie for that long, and their actions may also show differently. You can tell me that you want to marry me, but if I hear from you every three days, then that's probably not the case. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of things that we see that we know that's like if you if you gotta go and go write somebody in their inbox to ask them for advice if you gotta pay somebody for them to help you make the decision you already know the answer yeah. and i don't want to say this as a life coach because that 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 messes up my business <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth like a lot of stuff we know that we should not be in it we know that it's stressing us out, but we want to wait until our hair fall out. We in a mental hospital. We calling everybody a narcissist. Yeah, That's what we do. I mean, that's what we wait until that versus seeing those things early on. But when we include sex in the situation very soon, or just a lot of times just in general, once you include it, it just makes things way more complicated. You stop Focusing on the things that you want out of a person and just fo focus on the pleasure that the person can give you. Yeah. Yep. Wasn't it for me? Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, who makes a better spouse? Someone never married or someone divorced? Oh, that's that's hard. I've dated an unmarried person and a married and a used to be married. Not married. A used to be married. Used to be. <laughs> Thanks for the clear. Let me make that clear. You know, people, uh uh. But, um, in your opinion. Oh, man. Um, I will say the best experiences that I've had with men moving in a married way were ex-husbands. Mm. They knew how to be a husband. Mm. Holding your purse for you. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Sending, you know, sending money when you you know, uh, you and not even ask. Hey, you know, but they, but that's what they did in their marriage. You know, so that's what they demonstrated to their new partners. Um, the the single ones is just, I I think they lost. Honestly, I think a lot of them are lost when it comes to what it looks like to be a husband, because a lot of, and I'm gonna say husband, but just a person in general. Yeah. Um, they just don't know what it looks like to be considerate of the other person. And also, uh, a lot of people lack integrity. Yes. I totally agree. Yeah. Unfortunately. And we have so much stuff online. You every day when I get online, all men cheat. Women just got to face it. 
Uh, <laughs> why would you, you gonna leave a man who cheated on you to go to another man that's gonna do the same? It's like when y'all say stuff like this, what type of women do you think you gonna get? If you telling me that, I'm just gonna try to get what, what I can before it's time to go. <laughs> Yeah, cause I, I mean, look, look, without giving you none, without giving you none. <laughs> Real talk, cause I, I see these people online, and you know, I will post a reel or something, and it go crazy, and then there's all these comments, and the guys are so negative, like they, they, you talk. I, this is the most pessimistic men i have ever encountered online because in all honesty i always wanted to be fair to everybody males and females but when i noticed that i wasn't immune to being attacked by these men just unwarranted i could be talking about going to go uh eat, drink a starbucks oh you a hoe i bet you just got done sleeping with a married man like just serious just just silly stuff like how miserable can you be to create a, a false narrative in your head because of what you have ingested or listened to or heard from or experienced and place that on me? That is psychotic. Idiot. It is crazy. And I, you know, I don't like using the word sassy. Yeah. <laughs> I hear you though. I hear you. But you know, it's just and me being raised with a super duper masculine man. Well, he wasn't going back and forth with nobody. Yeah, I said what I said. Either you can listen or not, but I said my piece, and I'm gonna go on by my day. Yeah. Them, oh no, it, it's I gotta say something back. We got I gotta have a last word. It ain't about being right. It's not about being right. Yeah. It's about having peace. But you gotta argue like that. You don't want peace. Yeah. <laughs> they they having total warfare in their head, and it's sad. <laughs> it's scary. Like it's. It's, it's really scary. There's no empathy anymore for people. Um, everything is, you know, one sided, blaming one side when we don't realize it's just it's a cycle with everybody. It's, it's just a cycle. Yeah. Whatever you do is what's going to come back. If if, if y'all wanted to control women, now women are uncontrollable. <laughs> I mean, you set the standard. You great. <laughs> you, you preach it. real. Because, I mean, you would you would hope that there would be a balance, but because there is such a power uh, struggle in between men and women, and it's 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 more so, you know, just because of how, in my opinion, it's because of how women were treated initially. Yeah. So instead of them saying, you know what, um, we're going to do, we're going to be good people as long as the men are being good people, women say, screw it. We're going to do things our way because we couldn't do it because they wouldn't allow us to do it our way while we were with them. So now we just going to completely rebel. And so there's such a huge separation because there is disdain for the other party based off of, you know, just the same thing. Like how how uh, how black people are with white people. We went through slavery. So now we despise white people, even white people who ain't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. So. And same thing, you know, we men control. Now we are able to get away. Now we don't, you know, we don't like you or we want to be able to, to do whatever we want out of our role. And, you know, I'm not saying that women, you know, have to have roles, but I do the thing. I do think that there are certain things that women should uphold as women because we're not men. We're not men. I, yeah. And I totally agree. <laughs> you said you went and got some. <laughs> You said you got some Starbucks and they they call you a hoe. <laughs> that was funny. It, you just went to left the house. It, 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 and what it is, it, it's it's done to silence me. They want to si They want me to be quiet. They don't want me to say nothing. They don't want me getting no attention. And I, I mean, it's a lot of it's just jealousy. You mad because you can't? You don't have the benefits of women, but we don't have the benefits of men. All right. Yeah. So it's like you know, which what, what what you do you want to be a woman? <laughs> do you want I me mean, or do you want I me? Mean, do you want the benefits of of the woman as a woman, or do you want to be a man? Because mm. women, we have our struggles just like men have their struggles. Yes. But yes. they don't yes. want to. They don't want to identify those things. They just want to focus on you know what I'm not getting, what I'm not receiving. It's just it's just all selfishness. Yep. 
I agree. And I, I'm just thinking, and because I'm an equal opportunity employer. Mm -hmm. I'm if men do wrong, you do wrong. If women do wrong, you do wrong. It's it's right. I had I um I was talking about a, a video I did, um, my wife and I, because we had met on Instagram, got married in six months, right? Oh wow, that's and, great. Yeah, we were dating long distance, and this guy in the comment was like super simp. And I was like, I'm a simp because I got married. I was like, damn. Okay. Look, you see how they do Russell Wilson? That man make more money than all of them put together. <laughs> yeah, these guys. They and got you still them. got your mouth fixed on him because he married a single mother. Yeah. It's just, it's so, it's just so, it's so crazy and, and that, it's, that men can't live their lives freely and not be so, um, what's the word like hivish, where everybody has to think the same way and do the same yeah. things. Not realizing we all different. We all have different upbringings. We all have different experiences with other people. And you over here mad because somebody made a decision that made them happy? <laughs> Go yeah. heal. Go heal. Right. Like, I'm going to really see you again. I'm like, really? Like, the avatar <laughs> is like a cat. And I'm going to go. And, and it be people you would never give a chance to. Beard. Patchy beard. <laughs> Okay, I'm going too far. Let me let me let me zip it. Let me. <laughs> no, we we good. We good. We kicking it now. I mean, yeah. You but yeah, baby. I mean, just, they all it's like dirty fingernails, hair all over. They they're and I'm I'm not trying to be funny, but a lot of them are simply undesirable. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, they don't even have to be looks; just their attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Or or they you know they still mad at the high school quarterback yep. you know mm -hmm. yeah okay um yeah we can we can go on there's so much I want to talk about <laughs> there. uh what's harder for you to say i apologize i need help i love you i was wrong i need help may can we talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. um so like you know i mentioned my dad Yes. Um, my dad taught me everything. My dad taught me how to fix stuff. He taught me how to change a tire. He taught me how to change my oil. Mm -hmm. He taught me how to uh, adapt. He taught me how to modify, how to, uh, uh, what's another word? Um, find different alternatives to things. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like I have to reach the ending of <laughs> I have to reach a breaking point to where there is no other source for me to pull from available that I can do on my own yeah. before I decide to ask another person. Like even with my, even with my mom, like when I had my kids, I was so scared to feel like I was a burden. So what I would do, I would never ask my mom to keep my, my kids or, I mean, they had, they daddy gonna keep them. But you know, if I, <laughs> But, you know, if if I needed her to, I would, you know, I, th those are just things that were really hard for me to just ask because I've done so many things on my own. I persevered through so many things um, that, you know, it, it's it's really hard for me to ask for help. Um, now I'm a little bit better. Um, I, I hint now, like I, I'll throw it out there. And if you catch it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Like, hey, you know, well, so. um. You know, my window shield cracked and, you know, I need to go figure out, you know, what I'm going to do. And I be I, and it's, it, it can be that can be kind of manipulative, you know, just throwing it out there and wondering what they're going to say. Now, I don't judge them based off that how they respond, but I do take a note of it. Sure. I do take a note of it. Um, How helpful a person is, because I've always done so many. I've always done literally everything by myself. So just me, if if I ask you. I really, really, really need it. Yeah, I hear you. But yeah, but that's a that's been one of my biggest struggles um, when it comes to being more quote unquote feminine um, because I am so solution based. So because that's just again that's just how my dad raised me. So even with guys, they uh, and I, it made me feel bad. Like I don't want you asking me like how can I do this because I'm gonna go I, the same way I looked it up. You can go do it too. <laughs> But then you feel like you're mothering them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to be nobody mama. I, I'm, a, I'm already two kids mamas. <laughs> I hear you. That'd be real. And that's a conversation too, because I hear that a lot of times when. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I really thought I was superwoman for a really long time. <laughs> Until until I got a few slaps in the face to mm. let me know, no, no, ma'am, you you have all these resources, you have all of these people, all this support for you to utilize, and you over here wearing yourself out for no reason. Yeah. yeah. Instead of just using them as a village, you know, to mm. to help with you know whatever it is, because I've never I've never really been in need. Any stress that I've had when it came to help finances, etc. It was because I didn't want to say nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I hear you. I, I struggle with that myself big time. Mm -hmm. I, I know I've probably put myself in a lot of situations if I just asked for some help. Yeah, that's why I be when men be like, man, all y'all women are gold diggers. I'm like, gold digger, where I been for nothing. <laughs> And that was that was a negative thing. Like I should be able to ask my partner for help. That doesn't mean that I'm using them. It doesn't mean that I can't do it myself. It just means that I want you to help me. Of course. And it's nothing wrong so, with that. And they should. Yeah. They should. Last question. Mm -hmm. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? It's easier to love yourself. <laughs> Anyway. Because oh, you know it's easy to figure out what's wrong with you. <laughs> um, now and it, it's you can find out what's wrong with other people based off of your perception, but loving somebody else takes way more sacrifice. A lot, and yeah. I mean, if we're truly gauging what is more sacrificial or what is harder, it's yeah. easier to be single than be in a relationship. Because you have to deal with another personality. You have to deal with shortcomings of other people and and not put them on a pedestal and act like they're perfect because we're all imperfect. But yeah. to me, it's just what it is. If it is it feasible for you, if it is feasible, why are you worried about it? Mm -hmm. Now, if it's not. Then, you know, like how did, what they say, you know, if that person meets 80 yeah. percent and I don't even think that that's true. Yeah. Because if that 20% is priority to me. <laughs> you running with the 20? <laughs> I mean, if that is something that is priority, like, because the 20% could be honesty. That's you know, true. It, <laughs> That's true. It just, you know, you can have all the money. You can buy me gifts. You can take care of me, make my life easy. But if you're lying to me, mm. I can't even enjoy it. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's I'll be like, oh, you bought me another gift. What did this nigga lie about today? <laughs> like. He lied when he gave me the last purse. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but I'm 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 not superficial at all. So yeah. I really look at the quality of you know somebody, how consistent they are in their life, how well they take care of their responsibilities, how well they follow through. More so, still how they follow through with them, because if they can't follow through with themselves. You for sure can't follow through with me. That's real. So, real. you know, I I really do look at stuff on a deeper level, but and, and sometimes it could be out of by fault. Uh, <laughs> it can um, to a fault. Um, in some instances where I may jump the gun, you know, a little bit. But mm -hmm. as I've gotten older, I've just learned to just, you know, keep those emotions uh uh balanced. Yeah. And just kind of see things for what they are. And if it's something that I can't deal with long term, because I do value marriage. I'm not going to just waste my time dating people when I know it's not going to go there. It's not, I mean, it's not, not going anywhere. It's not going to lead there. And even if I do marry them, I know I don't want to deal with that. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, that's one of the <laughs> biggest reasons why I'm single now. I, every relationship that I've been with, and that's, that's my own fault as well. Like I chose them people. So with me choosing them and realizing, hey, long term, can I see myself with this person? I, I felt that way about somebody who I had a kid with. Yeah. I was just being, I, I had a kid with them and I felt that way like, oh no, <laughs> but the kid here already. So <laughs> can't go back. You know, 
I mean, it's, it, there's, I mean, that's, that, that's a, that's a consequence, you know, um, also a realization of seeking deeper before you, you jump that gun. Because in my opinion, in general, sex is probably the biggest either direct or indirect reason for the issues that most people have in their lives. Oh, okay. I, okay. I said that was the last question, but th what you just said, can you, can you just expound on that a little bit? Cause. So um, whether it may be, um, let's just say, uh, you know, a woman taking a charge for a man, he probably the slept with her. You know what I'm saying? There's <laughs> sex makes you do stupid stuff. <laughs> Serious, it makes you do dumb stuff. You don't think clearly. The moves that you make, it, it it's not sound. It's not sound. Especially if it's especially if it's good. <laughs> it's really not sound. And you know, I, you, after a while, that 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 shouldn't even be a factor of you staying because of sex. Like you, fifty years old. And you can't leave a man because of sex, baby. You need to you need to grow up. <laughs> Some people still be on that that sex. Because no priorities is all out of whack. But I know for a lot of people, just the just sex in general. It, it don't have to be the actual act of sex. It could be pornography, right? It could be so many other avenues that lead to sex that can be a deterrence of things that that happen in your life or you missing out on your blessings and all of that stuff i've seen women quit school to go move with a man you know what i'm saying just just different stuff that you know you don't you don't realize short term that hey this is this is fun and, and exciting but what does that look like for you long term yep yep i remember being in a relationship with a girl and she went to ohio state when I was living in Cleveland mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we in this relationship and she's like, I'm coming back home. You know, her mom was pissed. Not a lot. Look back. I'm just like, mm -hmm. yeah, that was, that was dumb. Old I life. did. I did that. I moved to a whole nother state. I left college, went to another college to drop out and be working, paying all the bills. Yeah. Why he going to his, uh, probate. <laughs> <laughs> While he's going to his fraternity probate, while I'm, I, I didn't quit school, I couldn't afford the school, and he just living his best life. But yeah. you know, again, you live, you learn, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and you move forward, and you grow, and you teach others, you know, about you know what things that they should look out for and not tolerate. That's true, very true. Oh my God, this has been a phenomenal episode, Jackie. Can you let everyone know how they can get in touch with you? Give us all your information, all that good stuff. What you got going? Mm -hmm. Um, so you can reach. So I'll be. I'm on TikTok. Uh, the same handle, Jack. My TikTok and Instagram, Jack My Vibes, J A C K M Y V I B E Z as in zebra. Jack my vibes. Um, you can DM me if you have questions. I do charge for calls <laughs> before the people start jumping in the inbox. I do charge for calls. Um, and th that link is also in my bio on both TikTok and Instagram. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate that. Thank you so much for taking mm -hmm. us out of your day. Thank you for having me. No, for sure. Keep uh, continue to create the great content. Uh, no matter what people say, keep <laughs> moving forward. We need voices like you out here in this earth because mm -hmm. people out here we tripping. Uh, so <laughs> I definitely appreciate the time. Uh, well, everyone, you heard it here. Make sure you go and connect with Jackie. Also, you can check out our website at scarytoremarry.com. As you see, we talked about the intimacy questions. Go ahead and grab you a deck for you and your significant other before you decide to say I do so y'all can really find out. Do I, I get a free deck? Ooh, I can send. I can. I can send you a deck. I'm joking. You can. <laughs> I, I can. I can send you a deck. You. Uh, I just need you to do a review on it. Yeah, I. I buy it. I'm just joking. I'm just playing. <laughs> which I purchase it. It's fine. No, we good. We good. Uh, you know, our black folks do. We love a discount. Honey. You know, <laughs> hook, hook a sister up. <laughs> This has been a great episode. You have to uh, come back. I, there's so much more I want to ask you. 
But uh, make sure you check out the website. Also, leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts if you are listening via podcast. Um, uh, by doing so, put you in a drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free stuff? This is Sean Heineman uh, with special guest Jackie. Thank you so much for your time. And we are out. <laughs>